other news of the day now. And large parts of South Australia are bracing for another round of intense rainfall and, yes, possibly even more flooding. Our reporter Patrick Martin joins us now from Coobapiti in the state's far north. And, Patrick, uh, we're seeing something that almost resembles clearing skies near you, uh, yet we're also approaching that time of day where I think the forecasts had had uh, heavy rain coming your way. So what What's the latest on the developing weather situation in, in the north in particular? Yeah, good afternoon, Greg. Well, it's probably the best weather we've had in the 24 hours since we arrived here in Coober Pedy. And uh, forecasters are now saying that Coober Pedy itself is likely to miss the worst of the weather. And most of it has fallen to the north of here and also to the south. But that's not to say that there hasn't been rain here. In fact, there has been quite a lot for this part of the world. And all of the, uh, the red, rusty, moon-like or Mars-like landscapes that surround Coober Pedy now have a light green hue to them, which is a pretty interesting sight to see. But that doesn't mean uh, that this community is out of the woods yet and far from it. The reason for that is there's been significant rainfall further south of here that has cut off the Stewart Highway for eight days now and that connects Coober Pedy to Adelaide. Again today there has been a little bit more rainfall there and South Australian authorities are now saying that that highway is likely to be closed for at least the next 12 days before experts can get in there and assess the road. And now what that means is people are stranded here in Coober Pedy. They can't get back to Adelaide by road and many people are telling us they just cannot get a flight out and if there is a seat it's too expensive for them to get. So although it is looking a little clear here at the moment, there are certainly other communities uh, who, or, or communities who are being affected by this. Overnight at Pukaju, which is a few hundred kilometres to the northwest of where I am, they had half of their annual rainfall in just one day, 106 millimetres there. And the ABC has been told that's flooded out the airstrip and that could potentially lead to problems if they do need to fly in supplies in that direction. And of course, at the same time uh, last night, Port Augusta, which is far south from here, they received 60 millimetres in just an hour and that led to flash flooding and people required uh, rescuing from their cars and some businesses also suffered significant damage. So although it's looking sunny at the moment, there's a, a long way to go in this uh, emergency situation here. Sure, and they're huge numbers you're rattling off there, Patrick, 100 mil when you consider just how flat the landscape is there where you are. Uh, all of which I guess makes Cooper PD, if you can get through on the roads, a decent sort of state post for emergency response. What can you tell us about assistance uh, getting into communities that have been affected by this storm? Absolutely, Greg. Well, here uh, in Cooper PD, they, the state's emergency services have set up a staging point to cover the far north of this region. A lot of outback roads uh, heading sort of east and south and west of here have been washed out by recent rainfall. And in fact, the Australian Defence Force has continued to airdrop supplies in to Cooper PD today. Uh, at a recent community meeting where I've just come from, they said that 18 tonnes of essential supplies had so far been delivered. And the Defence Force has said they will continue to drop food here for as long as is required. But it was at that community meeting where things got a little bit fiery. Some locals were very frustrated at the fact that the highway was still closed. For many of them, they couldn't understand why a little bit of water in their view on the road should stop people from getting through. And the meeting was even told that some essential workers and some trucks had been given permission to pass through. And that left a number of stranded travellers very upset that they couldn't go south to Adelaide, one of which uh, was a man who was trying to get to Melbourne by Friday to be by his wife's side as she went through open heart surgery. But of course, now that we hear that it's going to be at least 12 days before any assessment can be done, uh, it's unlikely he and many others will get out of this community for some time to come. All right, so uh, you can understand that why those frustrations are building and may yet still build. I will leave you there, Patrick Martin in Cooper Pedy, to uh, continue your very helpful coverage. Patrick Martin there joining us in South Australia. Now, today marks one year 